is web development and software engineering for me? Is this something I should still be learning in 2022? Hmm. Greetings everyone and welcome to a new video from Daniel Don. In this video, we are going to discuss HTML and CSS web development, but not just in the traditional way. Here's what we are going to be building. We'll be using HTML and CSS to create this beautiful looking portfolio. We'll see how HTML combined with CSS can come together to make the website look beautiful and great. I want to show you the practicals. Not just theories of how web development works, blah 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 and what it does. I want to show you how these building blocks come together gradually to make something beautiful and something nice. Yes, the whole complex thing you see starts from a small piece of code. In fact, it starts from an empty line. By the time we are done with this video, you would literally have built your first website as a software engineer. That's cool. Before we get started, please press the like button and subscribe to my video to continue getting more tutorials from me and also participate in my vlog or the things I do on my channel. You would also help YouTube recommend this video to other people. If you follow through with this video, try to leave a comment in the description below and show me what you've worked on because I would love to see it as well and react to it personally. Let's dive into the code right now. So here is what we're going to be building throughout this entire crash course. Again, I want to repeat that this video is basically a crash course on HTML and CSS and it is not in any way an entire video to teach you html and css i'm making this video because i want to quickly show how html and css works together to people who haven't used it before and i want to explain the basic concept of what html is what css is but i didn't just want to do it in the traditional way where i just talk about it but i wanted to talk about it by building something with it so while this looks good i designed it um it's also a basic website and it's also looking like a basic portfolio. It has text here that's like the header, create your dream. And um, it has an image, it has a button, it has a navigation that you could hover on and then you get like, um, you, you get it change color basically and you have another button here. This is enough to quickly show to a beginner what the possibilities of web development are um, if it's something you would love to do and to quickly explain how code or web development doesn't have to be for the smartest person is literally for anybody anyone who wants to you know learn this skill can actually learn this skill and the thing that many people see as a jumbled up of you know like weird characters on the screen when we start to look at it in bits we'll see how it's literally easy to write i won't say it's easy to write that was probably a wrong term but it is not as hard as people project it to be once you understand the basic principle of it so um let's get started the first thing we want to do to start doing this that we that i've already done here is to create a new um a new folder on our computer where we are going to put this into and follow me because we'll do that gradually if you're using a windows i'm currently on a mac if you're using a windows it's basically creating a new folder on your computer i'll just do that on my mac could come here and uh, let's go to documents and new folder i'll call this folder um portfolio now we've created the folder called portfolio and what i quickly want to do is to open it up in my text editor or my code editor right i'm using visual studio code as my code editor for this tutorial and i know that you probably do not have a code editor if you've not started programming already if you started yay <laughs> nice but if you've not started you probably don't have a code editor by now and that is totally fine you don't really have to code along with this video if you want to code along with this video i'll leave a link down below this video to download um vs code which is like a really good code editor that you could use of course there are other options out there you could also explore but for this video i'm using vs code and you could also use vs code as well code editors are literally used to write code just like you have microsoft word for you know text editors and you know writing text and documents you have the code editor which gives you the proper intelligence proper you know formatting and stuff for your code so we use the code editor to write code now to open this in my code editor from my computer i could simply just select this folder 
if it was a window and I'll see if it was like windows and I'll see open with you know the the code that is what I'm using but here I just want to do it by terminal because that would be easier in this case so I'll open up my terminal on my computer in windows is your command prompt I'm trying to you know cover both sides at once so here I'll just um, CD into my documents because that's the folder where this is in okay and um, from document folder I want to open the portfolio folder so portfolio and I could do code dot because I've configured this on my laptop to open a code editor when I do this so now we've opened a blank code editor on our screen and we do not have any content inside first of all what do we want to start from the first thing I want to explain in this tutorial is what extensions are. So for example, we are writing code and we've mentioned that we want to write HTML and CSS. The browser needs a way to identify that the content of this document is HTML. Just like, not just the browser, your computer in this sense, right? Your computer needs to identify the type of file that you want to write. For example, extensions are not limited to HTML. Have you heard of MP3 when you have like, you have music and you have .mp3 or you have videos and you have .mp4 or you have um, PDF files and you have .pdf and you have Word files and you have .dox. It goes on and on and on and on and on. For HTML and CSS, they also have their extensions. While HTML files would end with .html, CSS files would end with .css. It's basically helping the computer treat this as a HTML document and not as any other document. So inside of our portfolio folder, I'll just create a new file new file and I'll call this index.html. If you start watching videos and tutorial, you see the word index used, used a lot in um, naming files and naming HTML files. The reason is not that deep. The reason is that um, it's already like a convention to name some files index.html, especially the root file of your, you know, your web application you name it index.html it could be any other name but you would note when you start to host things on servers that the servers are usually configured defaultly to handle the index.html file as the entry file in the entire document so we are going to stick with this name we could do banana.html we could do boy.html we could do girl.html but we are doing index.html try out and experiment with other ones and it would work the same for this tutorial i'm quickly going to create another you know um file and i'll call this styles.css and this is the style or this is the file where our styling would live later in this video when we get to where we want to work on styles for now let's go to the html document and start talking about html what is HTML. HTML means hypertext markup language. HTML is the number one language in web development because without HTML, you can't get to more things. Let's give an illustration of what HTML is compared to CSS. We could easily compare this to a human body. Think about the human body. You have the skeleton, right, which defines the form, but it's not beautiful right without the skin the clothings the jewelries you wear you won't have a beautiful um you know like a beautiful outlook but without the skeleton the skins the clothes and every other thing inside of it cannot exist so html defines the structure of the page helps you to you know define things on the page if you have text they will live in the html file if you have videos they will live in the html file if you have um pictures they will live in the html file and on and on and on links would live in the html file as, as well so html helps you define the structure of how the web page should be and then with css you are simply styling that structure for example you want to say oh this section should be blue and css could make that happen oh this edge should have um rounded corners css could also make that happen for rounded corners oh i want this kind of animation 
animation on these websites css can provide animations for your websites as well so css is the beautification of what html provides already right let's move forward to start looking at how we could write html and what it would entail for us we've talked about file naming we've talked about file extension and the next thing we want to start talking about is actually looking into writing html the first thing i'm going to write on this page is this tag called doc type and you see it's called doc type html what does this tag do this tag simply tells the browser to treat this file as a html file remember the extension is telling the computer the electronic device where it is on that this file is a html file but we need a way for the browser to know that this file is a html file so it could actually be opened and run on the browsers this file or this tag should just live at the beginning of the document we've not discussed tags and elements in html but we are going to talk about that shortly as well tags and elements in html are html tags and html elements used to build the markup of the html file but the doc type you know tag is not a html tag it is external from being a html tag it's simply a tag for the browser now this would lead us to explain what markup languages are what are markup languages what really is a markup language now i'm going to simply go to this definition from the uh, britannica english dictionary so it says a markup language standard text encoding system consisting of a set of symbols inserted in a text document to control its structure formatting or relationship between its parts what the markup language is in simple terms is that the markup language would help you arrange and structure your documents using tags using um formatting styles and using symbols right to format that document into what you want it to look like but on the end result of the look of what you formatted with the markup language it doesn't have those symbols it doesn't have those tags but it is simply made to look like what the tag represented when writing it for example there is a markup language in html that makes a text bold but you don't expect to see the tags and symbols of you know that markup language when you're finally viewing it on the browser you don't see angle brackets on the browser you don't see weird characters on the browser you only see that in code because you're writing and you're trying to format that using a markup language it doesn't mean the end result would be shown in markup languages this is why html is hypertext markup language people have this thing about is html a programming language is it not a programming language so sure, it is not a programming language but that's not the point it is a markup language and it is one of the most important part of html so it largely plays a part in your learning now let's move further and start looking at html and we'll start remember we are working towards building this right here and we are going to start doing that from the scratch the first thing we need to do is to declare the html tag and we are going to say lang uh, we are going to say this is equal to en then we close this and we open now this looks like a lot already but let us talk about tags and elements html tags and html element this is an element while this right here from here to this point is in fact a tag so a tag is one part of the element usually the first part of the element and the um element is the combination of the two parts of it and the content in between the tag can be like we have the p tag for paragraph we have the a tag for hyper reference links we have the italics tag we have the break tag we have different tags in html and then we have the element now we wrote lang en right here if you think about it lang would mean language and en would mean english we are just specifying that this html document primarily is on english language right so that helps you understand what this does right here but why is it here it is because it is called an attribute the attribute usually lives inside the 
first part of the html element the opening tag that is what is called so this is called the opening tag and this is called the closing tag the opening tag has an angle bracket has the name of the tag and has the closing of the tag when it has attributes it has the attributes inside of the opening tag the attribute simply tells us more about the element it is contained in so there are different attributes and this is just one of them but do not pay too much attention to this for now or allow it confuse you if it's confusing you let's just move further and i know things would get clearer as we move ahead the next tag we are going to discuss is the head tag now the head tag is where details about the web page lives in for example the title of the web page which is basically this part of the web page where you see my personal portfolio right here we live inside the head tag um, we could have the links that links to different places live inside the head tag as well for now notice or remember that this is a crash course and you don't really have to understand everything at the end of this video so next we are going to declare one other tag and this is the body tag the body tag is the part of the html web page that houses every other thing that you would see as content of the web page for example if we go back here you would see the text the images the buttons the navigation every other thing lives inside of this body tag so as we proceed after writing the things we'll write in the head tag you'll notice that every other thing about that simple web page we showed would be defined in the body tag if you've understood to this point or you follow through to this point then congratulations because we've just defined the first and initial structure of a web page we have the doc type we have the html tag that houses every other tag to show that everything inside of here is an html document then we have the head tag that houses details about that web page and then we have the body tag that finally houses the content the entirety of the content of the page now to move ahead let's go into the head tag and define the title tag we talked about we'll come here and i'll say title and now i want to call this title tutorial portfolio and let's save this right now to save is simply ctrl s remember saving is ctrl s just like you're saving in any other document you use on your computer which is still control s how do we run this on a browser how do we make this show up on the browser how we have this one showing up on the browser how do we do that you could go or you could simply go to your you know file manager again enter into the portfolio folder and when you're here you could click or right click on this html and open with google chrome when you open this with google chrome right now you see that it's currently a blank document because we don't have anything here at the moment we only have the title tutorial portfolio i want to show you another way to be able to open this on your html document on your you know browser and we are going to be using something called the live share or the live server that's what it's called now you go to the extensions part of your system and because i have it already installed you're seeing it right here if i didn't have it installed i'll just search for live server and i would click you see how this ones have the install button this one would have had it and i would click on it and it's going to install that for me but since i have it we could just use it to use that i would simply um right click and i will go to open with live server just like that it has opened up with live server for me the difference between opening it up with live server and opening it up with the other one which we went to chrome to do is that which live server once we save our document it reloads this page automatically for us with the other one we went to the file to get for ourselves when we save our document we have to come here and manually click the reload button again and yeah we are just trying to make things easier right here let's proceed to the body tag remember like we mentioned inside the body tag is where every other thing lives in and we are going to be using new tags that you're not used to because you've not used them before 
and as we're using it i'll try to explain what that is briefly before moving on to the next thing the first one is the div tag the div tag is usually known as the container tag the div tag helps you define sections on the web page and help you group sections on the web page as one entity now we're going to add some class here say class is entire body when we move to the css you'll see why all these classes matter for now follow through until we get there and i'm going to have another div tag inside of here i'm going to call this i'm going to have a class on this called flex container then i'm going to have another div tag inside of here that houses the first part of the flex container basically think about this as different containers on the web page think this is a container the entire thing like this is a container is one container and then inside of that container we have this here as a container and we have this as another container of its own and then we have this here as a container of its own and we have this here as a container of its own think of everything on the web page as viewing different sections viewing containers on that web page and it would help you um, realize how the structure could actually be when you're writing the code so let's go into our code back and con and i'll call this flexbox one now we move further to declare another type of tag and this is the h1 tag the h1 tag helps you write headings this is the h1 number one heading we have the h1 we have the h2 we have the h3 the h4 the h5 and the h6 now these are different levels of headings for your web page and we'll see what that looks like in the browser after we write this so let's say create your dream like this now if you don't understand what id mean because i haven't explained this we would understand that shortly when we go to our css let's go to what we are building right now you see it right here create your dream let's do this with h2 tag and see how it would have been or let's 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 quickly duplicate this right and i'll say h2 you change the closing tag to h2 as well and save and you see that this looks smaller than this so these are different levels of headings and think of it like writing a letter or writing a note where you have the headings you have the subheadings and you have the lower headings etc but for now we don't need this so we are going to be removing this remember we are trying to build this and we've written create your dream already yay let's put a p tag inside of here and the p tag is simply the paragraph tag if you notice while i'm typing you would see that something helps me complete it sometimes that thing is called in intellisense it usually comes with code editors or smart um, ides like integrated development environment like visual studio code it helps you you know give you auto you know complete features and intelligence features to auto suggest things that it thinks you're trying to do which is really great now inside of here i simply want to say create new realities with code okay now i'm going to introduce you to another new tag which we're also going to use here and that is the br the br is simply a tag that is for break line break to break it into the next line and i'll show you what that looks like shortly now if i save this we could go to the web page and we see create your it gives a break here and says dream it gives that break because right here i introduced a br tag before dream we are also going to do that here and notice we are following this design create your dream and we are going to do that here to also break this into multiple lines now there are different ways this could be done and this is just one of those ways we are using to do it for this video 
here i'm going to come here and to make this look even better i could move this to the next line and move this part also to the next line so that here i could say br for break and um, another thing you will notice is how the br tag is self-closing we have what we call the self-closing tags like the br tag they do not require an end tag or like a closing tag because they are self-closing on their own but what you just need to do is to attach this right here or not you could even just leave it and that would still be fine but attach it for consent for um convention sake uh next i want to say i love colors we'll put another br tag here okay now we've written everything we want in this br tag remember we said this is a container if we look at it from here this should be a container and you see how we have it as a container because all of them are being contained in this particular div so next if we follow our container pattern we'll see that we have a button here and that brings us to the button tag we'll call this get started now we are done with everything we need for this first part the next part we are going to go to is to um create the flex box too i know this would make sense when we start styling it in css but basically we are creating the second container that would house the image Now, this brings us to something called the IMG tag. The IMG tag is used to define images, as you can see here. Okay. Oh, I got confused for a bit. Okay, we already have this. All right. So let's say IMG and you notice it has two attributes. One is the SRC which means source and another one is the alternate tag right here. The SRC is simply telling you to put the source path of the image you want to place here. Now this could be a link to the image. You could use a link to an image online or this could be a path to an image on your computer. To make it easier for you though. When you want to use an image on a website, it's best to bring the image into that um, folder for the website. For example, put the image here or create an image folder inside of the portfolio folder right now uh, or images and then have the image there if you have so many images on your website. In this particular website though, we don't have much images here, just one image. So I'm going to put the image right here and then we could reference this in the um, SRC. For the alt, it means um, what is the description of the image. We are trying to make websites more accessible and it's very advisable to have this alt tag here and put like a description of the image. The alt tag helps screen readers to you know identify what the image is and screen readers could be used by people who are visually impaired it could also be used by you who isn't visually impaired but wants a screen reader to read out you know content of a website even while you're not looking and this gives um this helps if you put a little bit descriptive information about what the image which you're rendering here is all about so let's get the image quickly and if you're following with this video i'll leave a link to download the image at um in the description so this is the image and we are simply going to reference this image on our src so this would be slash toyface.jpg remember you have to get the extension name of the image well if not it's not going to show up i see people making this mistake most of the time where you don't have your image path correctly maybe you didn't capitalize where it was capitalized um you did not get the extension name very well let's say you put png here instead of jpg and stuff and then it doesn't work so make sure you confirm all these details before you save right now if i save and go back to my browser let's go here 
you see that I have different things on the page right now. I have the create your dream. I have the um, text right here, which we wrote, which is create new realities with code. And then I have the get started button and I have the image. Now, what you would notice is like we said with HTML, we are defining the structure of the page. When we get to CSS, we'll be able to do the magic that would make this look all beautiful and look nicer. But notice that you cannot do CSS without doing HTML first. The next thing we'll need to declare is the navigation down below. And I'm going to use a class or an, an element called nav. And inside of here, I'm going to use another element called the UL. And the UL means another list. And this is going to be a list of navigation items. Then we have the li tag and we will call this view offers. From our design, this is just one of the things on the navigation. Uh, so I'll put this into four because that's how many navigations we have. Uh, I think we use a lot of um, we use a lot of copy and paste, which is cool because it makes life easier. So I'm going to put this third one as dash me money, which was just something I wrote for fun. Remember, we could put anything here. These are basically text, you know, input fields that anything could be inside of. And the last one is learn. Then after the nav, we want to put the last thing we are going to be needing for this page. And that is the button, the last button under. And I'm going to call this with an IDCTA button. Let's close this. And uh, let's write talk to me. If we go back to the browser right now and scroll down, we'll see the navigation shown as something like this. And we'll see the last button here that says talk to me. If you follow through to this point, congratulations once again, we are done with the HTML and we are done with everything we need in the HTML document, except one thing which I'm still going to mention. But yay, these are all the contents that we need for the structure of the web page. And the rest of the beautification would be something that would do with CSS, which is the cascading style sheet. What is the cascading style sheet? What is CSS? CSS helps you define, like we said, it helps you define styles, some animations. It helps you beautify the HTML basically. And what does cascading style sheets mean? It means it applies the styling to the element and to the page based on the level of importance that styling has to that element it wants to be applied on. For example, an example of cascading, which is a usual English word, is that if we have a styling applied to the body and we say let the entire body be blue and then we come to the flex container which is inside of here and we say let the entire item in the flex container be red now remember that on this particular one we've already said the entire body should be blue and remember that the flex container is inside of this entire body that should be blue but what would CSS do? Which styling would CSS choose to apply on the flex container? Blue or red? Now, because of CSS cascading nature, it would want to apply the styling closer to the element as the dominant one. So for this example we cited, CSS would decide to apply red on this container because it's the exact styling we gave to flex container, while every other thing on the body would take the style of blue. Let's move to CSS quickly. Um, we want to put a link tag here and this is an external style sheet which we are doing right now because we have different types of style sheets but this is not an entire video to discuss the different types of style sheets and how to declare them and stuff. This is a video to show you how HTML and CSS could work together and i think we are doing good at doing that so rel and we'll call this style sheet oops yeah 
I need to put another one here and remove one here. <laughs> yeah. So the link tag doesn't have like a closing tag. Everything happens inside of the opening tag. It is a self-closing tag as well. So um, rel here means relationship style sheets and we are going to have the href which is the hypertext reference. The href would be equal to style.css. Same thing happened here. Oops. Okay. So right now we have our style sheet connected to our head or our HTML document. Because you would ask yourself, how would this entire external style sheet be able to identify which HTML documents to apply the styling on? What if we had index.html, home.html, about.html, contact.html? How do this style sheet know the exact HTML file to apply the styling on? This is what we just did here. So with the link to that style sheet in the html document the html document know exactly where to apply the stylings to now inside of the css file inside of the css document what we want to first do like you would see in this right here is to give the color to the entire um, body of this file and for the color if you're following along you could just copy the color code or get my color code from what i would use here and apply in yours and yours should have the color as well first we are going to style the body tag and this is literally how you style in css the attribute name and then this um this brackets container right here curly brackets container right here to contain the details of what style you want to give to that attribute so first we want to say background color and this is what we want the background color to be and okay yeah we'll just come back to this oh yeah i call this style.css instead of style so be careful to link your files correctly if not it won't work yep another mistake i forgot i spelled this as style sheet the style share instead of style sheet uh didn't see when i made all those mistakes though okay so now if you look at this you see that the color of this entire web page has changed to blue and that is simply because we styled the body tag and gave it a background color of this shade of blue right here next we want to style the entire body which is this so like we said and like we discussed, we are talking about the class attribute and the ID attribute. Now the class attribute and the ID attribute in its simplest form is used to identify specific tags and specific elements that you want to apply a specific type of styling to on the web page. So it's an identifier that the style sheet would use to address specific um, elements in the web page. For example, we have the entire body class here. And we could simply style that entire body class by putting a period sign, putting the name of the class, and putting the curly brackets where the styling would live in right here. So for this, I want to say padding top 5%. So padding from the top 5%, which should be 1000 px, margin 0 auto and um, the color should be white if we save this right now and go back to our browser we'll see that this gives this give us this styling where this was moved from the edge this was brought down and um, there was also you know some adjustments to other parts as well like this part right here next after styling the entire body what we want to style is the flex container now all the classes we are putting there have started making sense because we've started using them so here we have display 
and we want to display this as flex. What does flex mean? We want to simply arrange this content to be this container next to this container and not this container under this one. So we want them to be side by side and not under each other, right? So we could simply say display flex. Once we save, we go back here and you see that currently it's being displayed as flex, but we still have some issues here. So we are still going to fix some stuff here. So follow along. We have the ID flex box one flex. We want to say flex should be one. And um, we want to further, you know, say padding top hyphen top should be 40 pixels. Now for Flexbox 2, let's do the same thing. Flexbox 2. I want to say Flex should be 2. Now this is not an entire video explaining Flexbox because of course there are many things that goes on in Flexbox that I didn't just talk about. We are just um, running through basics of stuff. But Flexbox, I, I would link you know an article I wrote on Flexbox if you want to really check out Flexbox. But you do not actually need to check out Flexbox now if you're a beginner. You just need to follow along with this video and you know get the basic concepts and idea behind web development. That is what this is about. So for Flexbox 2, if we save this, we quickly see our web page. Oh, nothing really changed, but yeah, we are going to fix that. So remember, this is the class right here. Oh yeah, so Flexbox 1, I made this mistake here as well, which has cost us a lot. And um, yeah, I think these are the only places I made, I made those mistakes. Apparently, I didn't realize that the keyboard was sort of like bringing out the two parts of the bracket instead of one but let's move ahead though <laughs> so after flexbox 2 let's start the image in flexbox 2 to select the image tag we see that we just had to write flexbox 2 and the image inside of it and basically we want to say the width of the image should be 380 and the height of the image should be 340 pixels if we save this we could go here and basically you see that that exactly is what happened right here the width has changed and it's beginning to take shape like the website we have the full website we have is beginning to look like it's little by little which is good next let's style the flexbox one button so we'll say hash flexbox box one and we'll say button now inside of it we want to simply make this button to look better right here so bigger change the color and make it to look how we want it to look like and um, we we'll say padding 15 pixels width 200 background color and this would be i just copied the entire hex code so that we don't have to do like guesswork and stuff so we want to say border none because I don't want any border around this button and I'll say cursor pointer. The cursor pointer would help the cursor turn into like a pointer when I hover on top of the button just to give that user experience feel of this is the button you can click me. And if we save this right now and come here, we would basically see that the button has changed the width has changed and everything and if we hover on top of it you see that the cursor changes to a pointer now we want to change the get started text inside of here and make it capital but from css text transform and i'll say uppercase once we do this we see that the text has become an uppercase text Next, let's style the P tag inside of the button inside the Flexbox One container. And I could just do that like this. We say P, and I want to increase the font size of it to 18 pixels. So, this is it for this particular styling. Let's move ahead to style the navigation, and then we will come here to adjust this a little. But first of all, let's style the navigation. So, for the navigation, we, we could say nav and we'll select the ul tag 
and inside of here we simply do the same thing we want this to be side by side and not straight this way so remember we did that same thing here and we are going to do it here again so display flex width should be 450 pixels okay and we have justify content space between padding left should be zero quickly we are going to style the single li tags inside of it and i'm going to say list style none because i want to remove those circle bullet points around them they are not needed and i'll say cursor pointer as well and i would say okay yeah so this should do for this so if we look at it we see that the cursors are pointers right now next thing i want to make it so that when i hover on each of these buttons right here each of this navigation item it changes to um it changes to the green color as well so let's do that so i would say nav right i'll say nav ul li and hover um, hover is a pseudo, pseudo, you know, styling as well. So we say color, and we want to set it to this same color. So let's just copy the color code from here, actually. Put here. Okay. Yeah, this should be UL, not UI. When we look at this, you notice when we hover on it, it does this. But we want it to do it in like a kind of animation feel like it's fading into the color and not just popping into the color like this. So what we'll do is to go to the nav um, li thing that we have here and I can simply say transition. Transition, I'll say 0 0.3 seconds. That's take 0 0.3 seconds to complete any transition happening on happening on it and set that to all as well. So right now you'd notice how it sort of fits in a little and not just you know pop into the color. The last one we are going to style is the CTA button. The CTA button was just named that way because it's a call to action button. Remember, these classes and these IDs could be named anything we want to name them. It's often advisable to name them with clearer names and clear names that are descriptive of what, you know, like the element is or what the element contains and not just something abstract. But you don't have to give it this exact names i gave it the only thing you should make sure of is that when you're styling it in the css the name you give it in the html should correspond exactly with the name you're using on the css file if not it would not work so on this we want to simply say padding 15 pixels width should be 180 pixels background color transparent okay color white one px solid white text transform uppercase okay save this and look at it here and let's reload this page oh that doesn't work and let's look at the cta button let me check my html file because i put yeah so i was wrong here <laughs> same thing happened okay so you notice now it has changed to look like this if you want this this um if you want this button to be hovered on as well and have it changed to the cursor remember what we could simply do we could simply go to the style sheets go to the button here and we will say um we want to use the cursor yeah the cursor and set it to pointer so right now you see that 
if we hover on it the cursor changes to pointer another thing we could also do is to target the hover uh, we could say CTA button again and say hover and when it hovers we simply want to take this border right here declare it again here or we could simply say border color actually and I could set the color to this color right here when it hovers okay to make it happen slowly I could simply come here and say transition 0 0.3 seconds for all save this and look at that it changes to green when it is hovered on so you see this is becoming like this one the only thing missing for this to be like this is the margins in between this place and the type of font so those are the two things we'll be doing and we'll be done with this video right here oh yeah yeah this was wrong actually the spelling was wrong okay oh yeah so look at it right now it worked it was just the it was just the um, spelling being off so this helps you to remember that if the spelling is off if you don't spell it correctly it probably won't work so when it's not working try to confirm the spelling try to confirm did you use that as a class or as an id how did you declare it in the first place and then that could just help you make your work a whole lot easier next thing and the final thing we are going to talk about before we call it a close for this video which has been interesting so far is um adding fonts so changing the font of the web page if you want a different font you could always use a different font but how do you use a different font on the web page you could declare a font family and you could see the number of fonts we have inside of here already we have the korea new we have the franklin gothic medium we have the gilg sans we have lucida sans we have times new roman and on and on but these fonts are limited and it doesn't give us all the options we want so if we want more fonts that are not available here for example on this web page the one we saw as the sample we use montserrat to build it so the montserrat font doesn't exist here and this is why in html and css you could actually import fonts um, from anywhere you could bring a font as a file you could link a font through like an online font online and for this tutorial we are going to be using google font fonts.google.com and we will search for montserrat oh yeah the spelling was wrong montserrat this is montserrat we could simply select the shade we want i think we want this one we'll just select some of them i'm just going to add them inside of here extra bold okay <laughs> yeah and i think this would be enough for what we want so what you want to do is to just copy this link they provide right here Control c copy this link go into your html file into the head section and post uh, paste this in the head section now we've pasted this in the head section and this is what it looks like try to format your document properly there are different formatting tools like prettier which we might discuss in some other video and not this one but try to format properly when making you know a document and we'll save this we could simply now take the css rule right here which is the font family montserrat and we could take this to our css and we'll delete this one we just wrote right here paste this other one here but let's look at what it looked like right now so create your dream create new realities with code blah 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 what I want you to notice is the font type that is used here because we haven't saved. So when we save, we are going to see if the font size or the font type really changed or not. Remember, this is how this looks like. This is how this currently looks like. And let's save by doing Ctrl S. The font has actually changed. The font has changed to this. 
which is looking a lot more cleaner depending on what you want to do so when you start learning deeper and going deeper into web development and software engineering you start seeing different patterns you start seeing different things that work on different websites the different fonts other people use on their own web pages and i think it's safe to just use what other people are using in terms of like fonts and let's say some colors and stuff until you're able to come to that place where you want to be extra creative again it's not bad to be extra creative i'm just talking about trusting the judgment of thousands of people because that is what is in use already but again feel free to experiment feel free to move further into this and um if you enjoyed this video, you could also check out some other stuff on my YouTube. Um, I'm launching front-end mentorship soon and there will soon be a landing page. If you're watching this as a, at a later time, you could um, look at the link in the description and you would find it. If you're watching this now anyway, you won't find the link there yet because I'm sort of like redesigning the front page of the website now what front-end mentorship would allow you to do is participate in my mentorship program the mentorship program is a pre-recorded set of mentorship lessons a community and stuff that helps you track your learning and the pre-recorded lessons help you take you step by step into what we've just done in one hour here it takes you step by step into it and shows you what these details are for example we explain what the p tag is in detail we explain what the head tag is we explain what external style sheets really are what flexbox is what inline style styling is and on and on and on we take it into bits and details instead of just you know talking about it in one you know jumbled form like we just did right here but i hope you're working a bit with the um full idea of what we were trying to do in this video where we were trying to show you that when you see text written like this and it becomes so long like you see code you need to understand that it was a gradual process to get to this point and it did not just happen all at once so this is it for this video this is it for understanding what html what css and what this concept is like and i'll see you in another video where we you know talk about some more stuff but before that time stay safe enjoy yourself and let's catch up some other time <laughs>